Hello and welcome to ProjectWise Administrator Fundamentals Accreditation Course Folder and Document Permissions. In this lesson, we will learn the absolute basics of setting up folder permissions and document permissions for a selected folder and its documents within. We will also go through in details exploring all the different folder and document permissions that ProjectWise offer. Let's review the access control for the learn folder and its documents within. The far left section of the access control tab is the participants involved for accessing the selected folder and documents. It could be users, groups, as well as user lists. For best practices, it is best not to directly reference users because users can come and go at any time. We do not want to reset the access control for documents and folders every time a user has joined or left the organization. Groups or user lists are more preferable because users can be removed from the groups or the user lists without modifying the access control for folders and documents. The middle section has a set of folder permissions. Here we can see that ProjectWise Administrator has full control on folder work area permissions, including creating, changing permissions, and deleting folders. Any ProjectWise user who is a member of the manager's user list have most of the folder permissions, including the ability to create and delete folders, but managers cannot set permission for the learn folder and its subfolders. ProjectWise users who are a member of the user's user list or the external user list will only be able to view and see the learn folder and its subfolders. They cannot create subfolders or rename or even delete the learn folder and its subfolders. It is important for users who are a member of the external user list to be able to view the learn folder and its subfolders. But since there are no toggle buttons on the far right section of the access control tab, being assigned to the external user list, meaning even though these external users can view the folder and subfolders, but the documents within are not visible to them. By the way, these toggle buttons on the far right section represent document permissions. For instance, ProjectWise users who are a member of the manager's user list have most of the document permissions in the selected folder, including create, modify, and delete documents, as well as free and unlock the documents that have been checked out by his or her team members, except the ability to set document permissions for other users. Conversely, users who are members of the user's user list able to create, view, work on the documents, as well as deleting them. But users are not able to set permission, nor can users free other users' documents. The very first icon we see in the folder permissions section, it is called folder inheritance status. The very first icon we see in the document permissions section, it is called document inheritance status. When we see the folder icon only and document icon only, it means that this folder and its documents within has its own set of permissions and is not inherit from any other place. When we go to one of the subfolders under learn, for example, building examples, we now see that the inheritance status icons have changed where next to the folder and document icon, there is a green down arrow symbol next to them, meaning the folder permissions and document permissions for this subfolder is in fact inherit from its parent folder and that is the learn folder. So unless the subfolder and documents have their own set of permissions, explicitly being set, they will always inherit from its parent folder or inherit from upper level. Another way of setting up folder permissions and document permissions for selected folder is via the folder properties dialog window. And it is on the work area folder security tab. 
and the Document Security tab, respectively. On the left of this slide are the Work Area Folder Permissions. We talked about the Folder Inheritance status icon just a few minutes ago. Full control. When this is on, all the Folder Toggle options will be enabled except the last one, No Access. Full control will allow designated users to have permissions on all the folder-related operations. When change permission is on, designated users will be able to set up folder permissions for the selected folder. When this is on, designated users will be able to create subfolders. And if this is on, designated users will be able to delete select folder and its subfolders. So be careful who you want to have this option enabled. Nevertheless, we also have the ability to recover deleted folders and deleted documents, which we already covered in the early lesson. This allows the ability to view the selected folder and subfolders. This will allow the ability to rename the folder or change the folder description. No access. When this is checked, all the other folder permissions will be automatically turned off, including full control. This takes precedence over all the other folder permissions. This means we don't even know that the folder actually exists. When we run a search, the folder won't show up in the search result, even if it satisfies the search criteria. This is the most restrictive way of preventing an individual to view a folder and its subfolders. Once this is checked, there is no other method to allow users to view the folder and the subfolders unless this option is unchecked. On the right, these are the document permissions. Even though some icons look exactly the same as the folder permissions, especially these ones, but they really apply to documents instead of folders. So for example, this would allow designated users to create documents and delete documents once they are enabled. This will allow users to see the document that is being displayed in the selected folder. This does not mean that users can view the content of the document. In order for this to happen, file read is required. Similarly, these allow users to rename the document, change the document description. This does not mean that users can modify the content of the document. For this to happen, file write is required. This option will allow users to move the document from one workflow state to another. If this option is not enabled, the change state previous or next will be grayed out and users cannot move the document to the previous or the next state of the workflow. Free. This option is particularly useful as it allows designated users, for example, team leaders or supervisors, to be able to free and unlock your team members' documents. Should they check out the documents and then take a four weeks vacation while another team member wants to work on the same document? Traditionally in ProjectWise, a user can only free the document that he or she checks out. No one except ProjectWise administrators can free other users' documents. Enabling this option for some designated users does provide this exact ability, even if they are not the administrators. On a final note, and this is true for both folder permissions and document permissions. There are only two main categories, allow and deny. On the left, everything that we see from the folder inheritance status icon to right icon. And on the right, everything that we see from document inheritance status icon to free icon, they are all allow permissions. The bottom icon, both on the left and on the right, there is only one deny, and that is no access. Deny takes precedence over all the allow permissions. The exercise for this lesson will be setting up access control for this learn folder and its documents such that administrator will have full access to the learn folder and its subfolders as well as having full access to the documents within. Managers will have most permissions enabled, including the ability to free and unlock 
his or her team members' documents when such situations do arise. However, managers will not have the ability to set the permissions for these documents and folders. For internal users, we want to set it up so that they will be able to view the learn folder and its subfolders as well as working with the documents. Regarding to external users, we will set it up so that they will be able to view the learn folder and subfolders. Since they are external users, we will only expose the documents from a selected folder when we are absolutely sure that they need to access the required documents. If you recall from previous lessons, we have already created the following five groups. Project leaders, designers, checkers, contractor one, and contractor two. We also create the two user lists, users and external. The users user list are considered as internal staff members. So we included designers group, checkers group, and coordinator as a member of the users user list. We considered external user list as external members. So we made contractor one and contractor two groups as members of the external user list. We will use the groups and user lists we already create to set up folder and document permissions for the learn folder. We have a new requirement. And so we will need to create a new user list called managers. Managers will carry more responsibilities, such as when situations arise, managers will need to be able to free his or her team members' documents so that other team members can work on those documents. Members of the manager's user list will be project leaders as well as the coordinator user. To set up access control for folders and documents, we must first select a folder, for instance, the learn folder, and then go to the access control tab, click on the plus symbol and choose add user to work area, folder and document. Select administrator and hit OK. Enable full control in the folder permissions section, as well as full control in the document permissions section. Click on the plus symbol again and choose add user to work area, folder and document. From the drop down, select access list. By the way, access list is just another way to refer to the user list we already create. Go ahead and select managers and users user list and then hit OK. Enable the option free for managers so that they can unlock and release documents that other users check out. We only want users to be able to view the learn folder and its subfolders, but no other folder operations are permitted. Here's a trick. The quickest way to turn off all options is to enable the deny or no access. Go ahead and just enable the view folder option. Finally, we want external users to be able to view the folder and subfolders, but not necessarily the documents at this early stage. So we will choose the option add user to work area folder. We will choose the external user list and then hit OK. Disable all folder options first and then enable the view folder option. When there are no options to enable or disable in the document permission section, meaning external users cannot perform any document related operations. Go ahead and click on the green check button to apply permission changes. We will see a dialog window asking if we want to apply the permission change 
to the selected folder only or to all of its subfolders and documents. If we choose the second option, any subfolder which has its own set of folder and document permissions will be overridden by this change. So think carefully before choosing the second option. Let's go ahead and choose the first option. Bear in mind, even if we choose to apply permission change to the selected folder only, subfolders which do not have their own permission will still inherit this permission change. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's not forget, we can also apply the same permission changes via the folder properties dialog window and using the work area folder security tab and document security tab to apply the permission change. During this lesson, we have learned setting up folder permissions and document permissions for a selected folder and its documents within. We also explored the different folder and document permissions that ProjectWise offer. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.